These men on skis are soldiers in the United States Army. They are members of a special military organization, which was until recently highly classified. Today, for the first time, their story will be told. The 10th Special Forces Group Airborne has the distinct honor of being the first Special Forces Group in the United States Army. As we celebrate 60 years of outstanding service to our nation, we honor the past and current warriors in the best organization that the United States Special Forces Command has to offer, the 10th Special Forces Group Airborne. The origin of the unit was in the passing of the Lodge Act in 1950, which provided for the recruiting of foreign nationals to the United States military. It was originally planned that half of the members of the Special Forces would be native Europeans. Many of the initial members of the 10th Special Forces group were Lodge Act recruits, who were strenuously anti-communist. Among the more notable of these men was Major Larry Tournay, a former Finnish Army soldier who was awarded the Mannerheim Cross during World War II. By the end of June 1952, the group had 122 officers and men assigned under the command of Colonel Aaron Bank, the founder of the Special Forces. Many had been OSS, Ranger, and airborne troopers during World War II. The group's mission was to conduct partisan warfare behind Soviet lines in the event of a Soviet invasion of Europe. On 10 November 1953, the 10th group was split in half, with one half deployed to Bad Tolls, West Germany, and the other half remaining in Fort Bragg to become the core of the 77th Special Forces Group. The Green Beret was authorized for wear in 1954 by the group commander, Colonel Ekman. By 1955, every soldier in the unit wore a green beret as part of the uniform. However, the Department of the Army did not recognize the beret as official headgear. They banned the wear of the beret, but it was later restored by President Kennedy, a major champion of the Special Forces. The 10th Group encountered publicity for the first time in 1955, when the New York Times published two articles about the unit, describing them as a liberation force designed to fight behind enemy lines. Pictures showed soldiers of the group wearing their berets with their faces blacked out to conceal their identities. In the early 1960s, the A-teams of the 10th Group began exchange training with unconventional forces in countries such as the United Kingdom, Germany, France, Norway, Spain, Italy, and Greece. In the summer of 1960, the 10th Group deployed to the newly independent Congo to evacuate Americans and Europeans evacuating 239 civilians without a single casualty in only nine days. As the United States became more and more involved in Vietnam, counterinsurgency became the primary focus of the special forces rather than unconventional warfare. While the 10th group was never deployed to Vietnam as a unit, its soldiers and officers played a critical role while augmenting different special forces groups. In 1968, the 10th Special Forces Group, minus the 1st Battalion, which remained in Germany, was transferred to Fort Devens, Massachusetts.
following the military cuts after the end of the Vietnam War, operational deployments decreased in both number and frequency. However, 10th Group still deployed frequently to Europe to train with NATO allies. From 11 May 1983 to 25 October 1985, the 10th Group deployed 17 mobile training teams, or MTTs, to Lebanon to support the Lebanese Army. The teams created a training program for over 5,000 officers, NCOs, and soldiers, which included the establishment of basic training sites, unit training, unit combined arms live fire training, and urban live fire training. The entry of the Syrian Army into Lebanon ended the program prematurely. An MTT from the 1st Battalion in Germany deployed to Somalia for four months to conduct disaster relief operations in June 1985. In 1986, a detachment of 10th Group trained the nucleus of the Nigerian Airborne Forces. The 10th Special Forces Group was the leading force behind the development of the M25 sniper rifle in the late 1980s at Fort Devens. The rifle was an improvement on the previous M21 sniper rifle, itself a modification of the M14 semi-automatic rifle. Following the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait in 1990, an MTT deployed to Kuwait to train the Saudi Arabian National Guard. Once the attack began, the MTT accompanied their forces into battle, coordinating troop movements, calling in airstrikes, and assisting with artillery fire support. Other elements of 10th Group deployed to southeast Turkey in support of operations Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Following the end of the first Persian Gulf War, Saddam Hussein turned his attention to Iraqi's Kurdish minority, causing over half of a million Kurds to flee into the mountains on the Turkish-Iraqi border. Under the leadership of Colonel William Tagney, all three battalions of 10th Group were deployed to the area for Operation Provide Comfort, a UN humanitarian effort. 10th Group coordinated the ground relief effort and was credited by General Galvin, the UCOM commander, as having saved half a million Kurds from extinction. During Operation Restore Hope in 1993, 10th Group deployed a coalition support team to support the 1st Belgian Paracommando Battalion. In addition to supporting the Paracommando unit, they assisted the 10th Mountain Division and provided security for meetings with Somali leaders. Following the ethnic conflict in Rwanda, 10th Group deployed to Uganda, assisting displaced persons in returning to their homes. On September 2, 1994, 2nd Battalion transferred to Fort Carson, Colorado, followed by the 3rd Battalion on July 20, 1995. The group headquarters moved to Fort Carson on September 15, 1995, ending a 27-year presence in Massachusetts. In December 1995, elements of the 10th Group were among the first U.S. forces crossing the border into Bosnia. For the next four years, both ODAs and the group headquarters provided rotational support in Tuzla and throughout the country, serving as liaisons between non-U.S. forces and the U.S. headquarters while providing situational awareness to Allied commanders as Joint Commission observers. Their efforts proved to be critical in the overall success of the mission. The unique skills of the 10th Group soldiers were once again called upon in the summer 1999, this time in the war-torn country of Kosovo. Initially providing critical reconnaissance and combat search and rescue capability, its warriors rapidly transitioned into providing critical real-time information as liaison control elements for the leaders of Task Force Falcon. The unit continued to provide outstanding mission support for the next seven years, when the mission officially concluded in 2006. Members of the 10th Group and the CIA's Special Activities Division were the first to enter Iraq prior to the invasion in 2002. Under the command of Colonel Charles Cleveland, the Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force executed Operation Viking Hammer, spanning an area of operations encompassing over 99,200 square kilometers with an enemy front of 560 kilometers. They overcame a severe lack of vehicles, surveillance assets and airlift in accomplishing their mission without a single loss of a U.S. service member. 
Their efforts organized the Kurdish forces to defeat Iraqi forces in northern Iraq before the invasion. It was one of the most important battles for special forces since Vietnam. Three silver stars and six bronze stars for valor were awarded in this engagement. The combined team then led the Kurds against Saddam's northern army. This effort kept Saddam's forces to include 13 armored divisions in the north and denied them the ability to contest the invasion forces coming from the south. This effort may have saved the lives of hundreds if not thousands of coalition servicemen and women. The group headquarters served as the task force headquarters on a rotating basis until July 2011, which saw the end of 10th Group's mission in Operation Iraqi Freedom. The group's 1st Battalion has maintained an enduring presence in Afghanistan since the fall of 2007. For more than five years, its companies have been executing three-dimensional foreign internal defense operations, training side-by-side -side with NATO Special Operations Units and training Afghan soldiers and police. With conventional force troop levels decreasing in Afghanistan, the importance of Special Forces soldiers will likely only increase. In 2009, a realignment of Special Forces Group's areas of responsibilities occurred, with 10th Group assuming mission support for the continent of Africa. Focusing primarily on joint combined exchange training teams, 10th Group soldiers are conducting training exercises with partnered African forces to enhance the military capabilities of the host nation. Another major responsibility is commanding the Special Operations Command and Control Element for the Horn of Africa called Soxi Hoa. Headquartered in Djibouti, this organization plays a critical role in the U.S. government's ability to build operational capacity, strengthen regional security, and eradicate violent extremist organizations through the partnership with host nations. A group support battalion was activated on January 6, 2006, and a fourth operational battalion was activated on August 19, 2010. Since 2001, over 140 Special Forces Group soldiers have been decorated for valor. 129 Bronze Stars, 16 Silver Stars, and a Distinguished Service Cross recognize its soldiers' unparalleled commitment to excellence, their fellow soldiers, and successfully executing their mission. The professionalism, honor, and elite capabilities of these soldiers and their unit will continue to be the spearhead in Special Operations. impressive professionalism. Depresso Liber, free the oppressed.